Once again, we are blessed to be in the family of Mr. Gessa Charles and Jen Florence uh, Bunyoro and all of us here present to pray. As we say, let my prayer rise before you like incense. This is our prayer that we join our hearts together to storm the heavens and request for God's intervention in our lives. We have heard from the first day reading of Ruth, the chapter 2. Ruth is a beautiful book. Uh, one of the books that really tells us about how even the master, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, expected for centuries came. Imagine he came from Ruth in spite of her story. She had given up almost her life. She had prayed to God and had almost not seen God responding to her life, especially by giving it to the son. And that's why we see that she moves out. She does not remain in one place. She moves out to do good news. She moves out to see how and what God can do in her. Dear friends, great things and miracles happen when we do not stay in one place. When we are people who move out to spread good news, and then we see that that news multiplies and miracles happen there. If Ruth was to stay in one place, probably she couldn't have got a husband and then get a child who bought Jesse and later David the Great and who from whose, whose roots Jesus the Messiah came from. So dear friends, we may be in the church praying, which is good. We may be in the house praying, which is good. But our prayer will be more fruitful if it leads us out of the house, out of the church, to go and allow God to guide us everywhere as we meet people. Because when we meet people in different places, especially as we are doing good, that's when miracles happen. This is what happened to Ruth. She went out of her comfort zone. She went out of her home. She had prayed, of course, and she went out. And that's when she was able to get a husband and then at the same time to get the child, which was a sign of blessing. And thanks to that child, we are also blessed. Where are we? Do we pray and stop in prayer and stop there and we do not move? That's why St. James says, faith without action is dead. That yes, we have to pray, yes. We have to spend time in prayer, yes. But that prayer should lead us to action, to doing good things, to doing good works. Not like the Pharisees, who were, as we heard in the gospel today, staying and praying and filling up all everything with the prayer. But when it came to action, they were not even putting a finger. They were just commanding. They teach us a lot that we, all of us, are invited to be people who pray very well, <clears throat> But that prayer should lead us into action, good action, towards my brother, my sister. And this is what the Pharisees unfortunately failed to understand. They would command. We as leaders, and each one of us is a leader in one way or another, leaders in the families, leaders even in different groups. But even if just being a Christian, we are called to be people who are of words, but also of actions. That our prayer leads us to the action. And when we are out there working and doing everything, we come back to God and say thank you. That should, movement should be very important. That before I do anything, I pray. Before I go to study, I pray. Before I go to work in the hospitals, I pray. Before I go to work in the garden, I pray. Before I go to work anywhere, I pray. And then that I am supported and I am, I am in kind of engulfed by the Lord. And I go out. And I know I am not alone. I am with the Lord. And I go because I am with the master of everything. And when I go out there and things are going on well, I say, thank you, Lord. I pray. I say, thank you, Lord. Things are going on well because I invoke to you and you are with me out there. When I'm out there but things are not going on as I planned them, I said, Lord, you know why they are not going on as I wish to. You know that there is a good reason why things seem not to be going on well as they are out there. Lord, help me. A beautiful way of life is that which begins from the church or the home praying and trusting the dead to the Lord and goes out to work because the master is with us. And when he finishes the day, comes back to the Lord and says, thank you, everything was okay. 
Oh, thank you. Everything was not so much okay, but I felt your presence. Oh, help me. Give me more strength so that tomorrow I continue doing good. That's a movement. That from the prayer to the life, from the life back to the prayer, to the life back to prayer, that is the movement of our lives every day. In that, it prevents us what we had. Nobody should be called the Father. Nobody should call the uh, ma Master. Because we have one Master, Jesus Christ. When we have one Master, Jesus Christ, who came to serve, not to be served, then we too are able to know that the one who is above everything is the Lord Jesus Christ. So we are called to be humble. To be humble before the Lord. And to know, we, humble means I know that I am strong, but I'm also weak. But I know I am serving one who is more powerful, who has answers to everything. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ. So it's a lesson of humility. If we take things literally, then we would say, if your left hand causes you to sin, cut it off. And if that's the case, then literally it means nobody will be having any hands. Yes, you'll be all crippled everywhere in the world. <laughs> yeah, that's, but they really we have to understand it, really. Of course, we are fathers. Nobody should be called father. Hey, we have a father of the family here. Yeah? So, the, Jesus does not mean that we should stop calling father in the sense of, in the literal sense. He just says, consider God as a father. When you consider God as a, the almighty God and as a father, master, then we, the fathers, are always getting inspiration from the one who is the father and master of everything. Let us pray this Eucharist that the Lord may help us to move out everywhere and spread good news. Not just to move around, but to move out with a mission of spreading good news. Because that's the gift we can give to others. A good news of peace, a good news of love, a good news of forgiveness, a good news of joy and happiness. That is our mission, that wherever we are as Christians, we are as people who spread good news. That's why it's in France, for Francis used to say that there does not exist a sad Christian. Because to be a Christian means to be a joyful Christian. Not because things are going on very well. There are moments that things may not go on well. But we are not invited to go on always with gloomy faces as if what is happening. That even in those moments when things are not going on well, we are invited to be people of hope. Of saying that, yes, God is under control. God is under control and he will see us through. And may the Lord bless you, dear friends. And may he help us to be humble. And may he help us to serve others every day of our lives. Amen. Amen.